I'm Tina and today I'm going to show you how to work mosaic crochet in the rounds. And to do so, I will use my terrazzo afghan as an example. It's all worked in the round. Little squares, as you can see. This is the baby version. And then there is the big version. As you can see and so it's all squares and they're joined together later and it all it's all worked in the round and it's really very easy but maybe the start is a bit tricky and there are a few tricks that I want to show you and so this will just be to show you how to start your afghan and as you can see as before always with the mosaic crochet the back side is just striped so it's like this. I wanted to show you one more version that I'm working on at the moment and this is like the infinite terrazzo square. So I just continue with the same same uh, pattern and you can make uh, a pillow cover like I'm doing here or just a blanket or whatever. So I'll show you how to amend the pattern and work that as well. So let's get to it. Okay, so now we're gonna do the terrazzo square and here I have two examples. This one I made into a pincushion, and this is actually uh, a wall piece. I just put it onto a, some wood. And um, like you can see here, we start with the pattern color, red, and then it's all worked in circles. And here I just did the double fade technique, uh, the color fade, and got this result. So you can use as many colors as you want, but you will always need at least two. So let's get to it. We start with pattern A, which in, in with color A, which in this pattern is the pattern color. And as usual, I start with a, a magic loop. And in the first round, we're going to do, it's supposed to be 16 FC, no, half double crochet. But uh, when I do it, I always do 15 and then I close it off with the the invisible join because it gives a, a very nice finish like so now i've done 15 half double crochets and i'm going to cut the yarn here to get a better finish so you pull it through straight out of the last half double crochet and pull your magic loop together like so so it closes completely in the middle and then you thread a swing, sewing needle and you want to make a fake stitch with this invisible joining. I like to use the, the this part of the needle go, to go through because I don't really want to split the yarn. I just want to go into the last, into the first loop of the round under it like so and then back into the last loop where we came out of and as you can see here then we get just like a normal stitch there so it really is an invisible join another good reason why to do it like this instead of just continuing straight on to the next round is because this gives a very good finish and although I do carry the yarn between rounds uh, I never get it to be neat from round one to three so this is my solution to just weave in the ends and I'm done with that as well which is great from this first round and start fresh in the second round. Okay, so first round done. Okay, on to round two. You just insert your needle wherever and any stitch just into the back loop. We're going to be working single crochets and it's all into the back loop because it's more side crochet. So you pull your yarn through, make one chain to fasten it and then make another SC into there and 
Now we'll do four more SEs and I'm going to crochet over my end here just to save time. Okay, four more. So I have five single crochets. Now we make the, the corner because in this round we're changing the circle into a square. So now I do two chains and then go back into the same stitch as I worked the last SE. Do one single crochet there and continue and do four more. So now I have five in a row, then I do another couple of chains for the corner and start again into the same stitch as I just did the last SC and four more. Another couple of chains for the corner and again one, two, three, four and the fifth goes into the same stitch as we begin our round in like so and then we always remember to chain two here as well we need to make the fourth corner and then we are going to join into so in the terrazzo square, and when I work in rounds in general, I like to move the join one stitch forward in each round to get a neater join. So here and from now on always, we're going to stip, skip this chain stitch here we did at the beginning of the round. And we're going to go straight into the first SC of the round and go into the back loop there. Take our color A again. And join with a slip stitch there and one chain to fasten. So this is round two. Okay, so I already joined and did the first chain here of the round and now we're gonna continue and do all single crochet stitches. I'm going to hide my end while I'm at it and we're gonna do five single crochet stitches now until we get to the corner. And in the corner is where the fifth lens and into the chains, we're just going to work them as normal stitches. So into the back loop of the chain, just as normal, just as all the other ones. Here we go, five. And then we make two chains in the corner. And now we have seven DCs. The first one comes into the corner chain. Whoops. So, and in this round we have seven stitches between corners. We're always adding two stitches in each corner all the way through. And the seventh one lands in the chain. And then we do two chains and continue. Okay, so now I have seventh stitch for this side here into the into the corner chain and then do two chains and I'm going to add two stitches here now the two that we're missing because we started with five and we want to have seven on each side so one goes into the second chain in the corner and the second one goes into the join from last round so you go here into and like so and to get the join neater on the back, I like to always work my last single crochet stitch of the round around the new color that's coming in. So I just put it up on my needle like this and work the last stitch around it. It's equally important to always tighten everything nicely than with the new color before you start. So it looks neat here, as neat as can be for a join. Then we are skipping the 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 chain here as always and we're going to go into the first SC of the round into the back loop of that one and pull our new yarn through with a slip stitch to join okay on to round four we've already did the join with the new color and the first 
chain and now we're going to start with the double crochets and in mosaic crochet we're always going down around for the double crochets so just yarn over see the the stitch that you would normally go into and follow that straight down to the stitch below like so and work a normal DC there and now we work four single crochets until we get to the corner. The corners are always the same. Working into the first chain here, doing two chains and then the second chain. And we go one, two, three, four, and then we're going to put another double crochet here. And in this round, we're putting double crochets in the middle of each side of the square. So if your double crochet is not in the middle of the side, then it is not in the right place. <laughs> Always four, double crochet, and four again. Now we're back on the first side. And here also we want to do four single crochet at the end of the round. And the last one lands here into the join, like so. And I'm going to hide my new color as best I can here by working this last single crochet stitch of the round around the, the tail of the next color that's coming up. And now to the join, as always, we're going to skip, skip the, the chain stitch that we did here at the beginning of the round and we're going to join into the back of back loop of the first double crochet of the round with a slip stitch and the new color, color A again. And one chain. Let's just continue on to round five. We start with a double crochet and again it's four single crochets until we get to the corner. Two chains for the corner. Again, four single crochets. So this is going to be like this, the whole pattern, the four single crochets until you get to your DC. And now we do one DC just before the last one. One single crochet into the DC from last round and another DC here. We're kind of framing it up. Last side, again, four single crochets from the corner. One DC, one single crochet into the DC from last round and another DC. So they're on the each side of the last DC. And then we do four single crochet to the corner as always. Two chains. And now we want to finish this side. So it looks like the others. So it's four single crochets. One DC. And here I want to show you a little detail. Okay, so here we're actually on the join from round three. And we didn't have any DCs at that point to hide them. So it's kind of like a double join here. You can see that there is one stitch here that you could go into but there's another smaller one here below and it's really nicer to go into the lower one just to hide a bit the the join it's a bit tricky sometimes to get into it but it's so worth it okay so the last dc went there to fix the join and now we're going to do our last single crochet of the round into the dc from last round and again, remember to put the new color up onto, onto your hook so you crochet around it to hide it a bit on the back. There we go, round five, and then it's just joining, always skipping the chain here and joining into the first DC of the round. And this way, as you are seeing, we really do get a very neat join, especially from the front, you can really not even see it because I'm always moving it and working these double crochets really over the join. And from the back side as well, I'll show you when, when we've gotten a bit farther along, but as you can see, we're hiding 
the tail here and it really I mean it a join is a join it's always going to be a join <laughs> unless you want to cut after each round but I would never do that when working with two colors I think this is quite acceptable okay so on to round six I already did the join and the chain stitch and I'm going to start the round like always from now on with a double crochet and then it's four single crochets to the corner Two chains in the corner, four single crochets again, and then we're going to do one DC just before the DC from the last round, and then three single crochets over the two DCs from last round, and the one in the middle, and then again a double crochet. So again, we're framing up the last round and again four DCs to the corner and continue the same way. So we're always just moving the the DCs one out. So we started here and then in the next round the two DCs were on the either side of this one and then we do these two on either side of these ones. Okay so now I've done these two sides just as this one and we're back to the side we started on and I'm going to do two chains in the, in the corner and then four single crochets always taking care to work into the corner chains as well just as normal stitches and then we're going to do one DC here before we get to the pink DC and finish with three single crochets and the last single crochet goes here into the last stitch and I put the new color on my hook to work over it like so. So this is round six. Okay and then we join for with the new color always into the back loop of the first DC of the round and we do one chain straight into a DC and four stitches to the corner. Two chains for the corner, four single crochet, and now we're back to the DCs. Now you see they're here, so I'm going to put this row one in front and one in, in back. One DC here, and now it's five single crochets to go over. The last one lands in the double crochet and then we do a double crochet again and four single crochets to the corner and work all the sides the same way. And now to finish the round I already did the two chains here in the corner and again we do four single crochet stitches and comes our DC right before the DC from last round and the five single crochet here on top and the last one goes into this last stitch here and I'm going to show you a tiny little tricks that I do. I go into this last stitch like so and I kind of go into the one below it as well, the DC here you see, because that's the join. So I go through there, put the, the next color onto my hook and work around that. Like so, and always tightening before getting the next color. Now we join into the first DC as always with a new color and work one chain. And now it's on to the last round. I'm going to show you round eight. And now we're going to be adding an extra. DC. So we do four from the corner, four single crochets from the corner. We do one DC here just in front of the first one and then we're going to count one, two, three and add a double crochet here in the middle to make the pattern sort of continuous. And then we do another three 
single crochets and the DC. So now we have three DCs on each side and continue as before. So this is how it looks at like after round eight and really the, the, the rest is very easy once you've gotten hang of the start and the join which we've covered quite um, well I hope and uh, in the in the the pattern itself in the terrazzo original as you can see here there's a little bit of a you you do a couple of uh, these here's DCs here to close off another pattern that we have here that comes like it's like a circle here and then this one is like a diamond I suppose you say in English so but it's all very easy and all explained in the pattern which is available both in my Ravelry store and on my web page but I also wanted to show you this uh, slightly different version that I'm working on now that is just like an infinite version of it you can use the same pattern but then just continue like we've been doing here before and as you can see you always just add one DC here in the middle every fourth round. We did one in in this round here, you see, and then we do it every fourth round. You have to add one new DC and then just continue as before. I mean, this is a very simple pattern, so it really leads you on. But I really like this infinity version as well. And I suppose you can all just do that just by watching my tutorial but just to let you know that if you possibly can your support is highly and most appreciated if you can go and buy my patterns over at Ravelry or at my webpage which is tinacrochet.com. So that's it for today. I ah, know I wanted to show you one more thing and that is my Saga baby outcome which is here. That's another pattern I have which is similar. It's worked also in the rounds, in little squares. And with this tutorial and the Saga pattern, you can you can use this tutorial to, to work on the Saga as well, to see how to start. It's the same technique and the same join. So, there you go. Okay, so that's all there is to it, really. As you can see, it's fairly simple and at least me personally, I very much like the, the end result. I love my Tarasak and it was actually the first pattern that I designed uh, using squares in mosaic crochet. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this little video and that it helps. And I'm looking forward to seeing all your Tarasak outcomes. Ciao!